168 years before Game of Thrones. The Targaryens were at their peak in Westeros. There were many Targaryens and even more dragons. From the perspective of every house in the Seven Kingdoms, major or minor, as well as from the perspective of commoners, and even from the perspective of Targaryens themselves. The Targaryen rule seemed to be so powerful that even 1000 years from then on, they would still rule the continent. But then the Dance of the Dragons happened. It was a Targaryen civil war that saw the end of many Targaryens and most of their dragons. It nearly destroyed their entire house. This is one of the most exciting and most epic events that ever happened in the history of this world, and it's exactly the event that House of the Dragon will follow. Therefore it should not come as a surprise that many main characters of the show are going to be the Dragon Lord ancestors of Danny Targaryen and Jon Snow. The series is based on George R. R. Martin's book Fire and Blood, which covers the entire Targaryen history in Westeros, starting from Aegon Targaryen and his conquest and going to the Dance of the Dragons while Fire and Blood Part 2 will also cover the Blackfire Rebellions, and will end with Robert's Rebellion. The prequel series House of the Dragon finds the Targaryen dynasty at the absolute apex of its power, with around 20 dragons flying over King's Landing and Dragonstone. Most empires, real and imagined, crumble from such heights. In the case of the Targaryens, their slow fall begins almost 192 years before the events of Game of Thrones, when King Viserys Targaryen breaks with a century of tradition by naming his daughter Rhaenyra heir to the Iron Throne. But when Viserys later fathers a son, the court is shocked that Rhaenyra retains her status as his heir, and seeds of division sow friction across the realm. So basically the show starts with King Viserys I Targaryen sitting on the Iron Throne with Rhaenyra, his oldest child being his heir, instead of his son Aegon, much to displeasure of Aegon's mother Queen Alicent Hightower. Through a series of flashbacks we'll learn about why King Viserys chose to keep Rhaenyra as his designated heir, even when he got a son. We'll also learn about the tension in the King's Landing court between Rhaenyra's faction and Alicent's faction, or in other words between the Blacks and the Greens. Rhaenyra's faction obviously supports Rhaenyra, while Alicent's faction supports Aegon as the future ruler of Westeros. King Viserys I Targaryen had three children by his first queen Emma Wren, but only one Princess Rhaenyra survived to adulthood. Lacking a son to succeed him, Viserys began to train Rhaenyra to be his heir. Young Rhaenyra was included in discussions of the affairs of the state, and was allowed to participate in meetings of the small council. Many of the nobles took note, and Rhaenyra soon acquired a huge number of supporters. After the passing of Queen Emma, Viserys named Rhaenyra his heir, and hundreds of lords and landed knights paid obeisance to her. The king later remarried to Alicent Hightower, and had four more children, Aegon, Helena, Aemond and Daron. A great tourney was held at King's Landing on the fifth anniversary of Viserys' marriage to Alicent. During the opening feast, Queen Alicent wore a green gown, while Princess Rhaenyra dressed in the red and black of House Targaryen. Note was taken and thereafter it became the custom to refer to greens and blacks when talking of the queen's party and the party of the princess respectively. While many expected that the king would change the succession order, and the Hightowers tried to persuade him to do so many times, Viserys only strengthened Rhaenyra's place in the succession, by marrying her to Sir Laenor Valerian, who himself had Targaryen blood through his mother, Princess Rhaenys. It's not a big spoiler as his character is not that important, but in season 1 Laenor will be executed, but I won't tell you by who, although you'll probably figure it out. And after Rhaenyra's husband gets executed, Rhaenyra will marry her uncle, Prince Daemon Targaryen, younger brother to Viserys. This only strengthens her position even more, as Daemon himself has a lot of supporters, and is arguably the best warrior, commander and general of this time. In season 1 it will also be established that Alicent and Rhaenyra's children have hatred towards each other, which will lead to many horrible events by the time the war breaks out. Speaking of the war breaking out, things start to escalate towards the end of season 1. King Viserys dies, Queen Alicent Hightower conceals Viserys' death from the public, and instead has Sir Criston Cole, Lord Commander of the Kingsguard summoned the small council to Alicent's apartments in Maegor's Holdfast. Grandmaster Orwile here predicts a war, 
believing that Rhaenyra would never be willing to give up her birthright, and had dragons at her disposal. When Lyman declares that he was not willing to listen to people plotting to steal Rhaenyra's crown, and attempts to leave, Sir Criston kills him. This makes Lyman the first casualty of the Dance of the Dragons. After Lyman's death, the Green Council made their plans, vowing their loyalty to their new king, and arresting all those in King's Landing who could be loyal to Rhaenyra. To all those who might be loyal to Aegon, ravens are sent. Prince Aemon, Aegon's brother, is sent to Storm's End, to betroth himself to one of Lord Boris Baratheon's daughters, so House Baratheon might fight for Aegon II. Meanwhile, Rhaenyra remains on Dragonstone, unaware of what happened, instead of coming to King's Landing to claim the throne. Criston, who once served Rhaenyra, convinced Viserys' son Prince Aegon the Elder to claim the rule of the Seven Kingdoms as his father lay dead. For this he became known as Criston the Kingmaker. Viserys had decreed his heir to be Rhaenyra Targaryen, Princess of Dragonstone, the daughter from his first wife Emma Wren. The Greens at the Red Keep support Aegon the Elder, the eldest son of his second wife Alicent, however, and Criston takes into custody any blacks remaining at court. Alicent forbids Septon's and Silent Sisters from treating Viserys' body. A week after Viserys' death, his passing is finally publicly revealed, with the Greens accounting the ascension of Aegon II Targaryen. The Silent Sisters then prepare the late king's body for the traditional burning of a Targaryen. Aegon's coronation is hastily prepared. The Dragon Pit is chosen as the site for its towering bronze doors, strong roof and thick walls making it easily defensible. Sir Criston Cole crowns Aegon, while Alicent Hightower crowns Aegon's sister-wife Helena. However, the night before, the first defection had taken place. Sir Stephen Darkling of the Kingsguard had left the city, with, amongst other things, the crown worn by kings, Jaehaerys I and Viserys I, and is taking it to the rightful Queen Rhaenyra. At Dragonstone, Rhaenyra finds out that her father died, and Aegon staged a coup, and was crowned king in King's Landing. Furious Rhaenyra quickly made her own council at Dragonstone, the Black Council. The participants are, amongst others, her uncle husband Daemon, her three eldest sons Jacaris, Lucerys and Joffrey, Lord Corlys Ilarion and his wife, Princess Rhaenys. Rhaenyra is crowned queen, using the crown her father and great-grandfather had worn, thanks to Sir Stephen Darkling who had arrived from King's Landing. Prince Daemon places the crown on Rhaenyra's head himself, and is named the Protector of the Realm, and Jacaris is officially named Prince of Dragonstone, and heir to the Iron Throne. During the Council it's resolved that while Rhaenyra remains at Dragonstone to regain her health, Prince Daemon and Caryxis would travel to the Riverlands, to make Harrenhal their base and railing point for those loyal to Rhaenyra. House Valerian would close off the gullet, blocking all shipping from Blackwater Bay. Princess Rhaenys is convinced that Storm's End would declare for Rhaenyra, since Lord Bormund Baratheon, the deceased father of Lord Boros and Rhaenys' uncle, had always been a supporter of Rhaenys. Prince Daemon is also convinced that Lady Jane Arryn, the Maiden of the Vale, would bring her support to their side as Rhaenyra's mother was Arryn herself although they believe the North to be too remote to play an important part in the war. Messages are to be sent to those lords nevertheless, with the eldest Jacaris visiting the Arins of the Eri, the Manderleys of White Harbor and the Starks of Winterfell. Rhaenyra's second son Lucerys travels to Storm's End. Rhaenyra proclaims King Aegon and his mother Queen Alicent as well as their supporters, traitors and enemy of House Targaryen. Back at King's Landing, at this point already a king, Aegon proclaims Rhaenyra traitor and the enemy of House Targaryen, and thus the Targaryen civil war starts. Dragons will dance, swords will clash, monarchs will rise and fall, and season 1 will end, leaving you to impatiently wait for season 2 to see what happens next. Basically, the House of the Dragon is focused on the war of succession between Aegon II and his half-sister Rhaenyra, over their father Viserys I's throne, the war that will be fought from 129 AC to 131 AC. It will see the deaths of monarchs, the deaths of Targaryens and their dragons, as well as major battles across the Seven Kingdoms, with the Starks and the Valerians fighting the hardest on Rhaenyra's side, 
and the Lannisters and Baratheons fighting the hardest on Aegon's side. All of this and more you will see in 2022 on HBO. Thank you so much for watching, if you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace!